Now we're going to attach the build plate. And so this comes up to the linear stage. So if you take a look at the linear stage, on the facing the front now, we've got four screw holes here, and those will match up to these four here on the on this L bracket. And this L bracket is gonna kind of hang down this way. Alright. So I'm going to need some screws. Got the other Allen key. And then let's get the four 20 millimeter M4 screws. One Get four of these in with my fingers, and then we can tighten them down afterwards. So the exact alignment of this L bracket is not super critical um, because the build plate is on a ball head um, and so if this guy is like tilted or anything it, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, so now I'm going to just kind of get this in here and then screw these down so that they are just kind of barely snug. Yeah, so I could I can move this if I push but there's um it doesn't really fall back or back and forth and that's good enough for now we'll take care of this the rest of this uh later and then we'd go in here and then we'd attach the build plate um if we wanted to um, and we'd be ready to print. But before that, we need to um, calibrate a couple of things on the printer. In particular, we're going to need to level the printer itself with a vat to the level of gravity, and then we're also going to want to level the, the projector as well.
So the next step here is to level the printer. So our feet are all screwed in fully and we have to use the bubble level to get the printer level. So for us to measure levelness, the best place to measure the levelness of the printer is in the vat itself. So we're going to unbox a vat and we're going to use it as the surface we measure levelness with. So this is a brand new V2 vat. Out of the box, you'll see that it is covered in protective film. And so it's kind of translucent right, all around. And there's film on the front and on the back and on the bottom. For now, I'm going to take the film off the bottom. And this gets our vat ready for service. So I'll put the vat in here. And you'll saw that in our pack that we unpacked, we have the, um, uh, the small build plate. So for the small build plate, we can put the vat kind of more, more centered, since we'll be printing mainly in a kind of an area around here. And so just to um, kind of get more even uh, measure, we put the vat kind of in the middle, and then I will snug down these two the two sides here. Oops, it's still loose. There we go. So we're snug down here, and then we will put our two-dimensional bubble level here. And we see that we are close on this side, but we're a bit further off front to back. Now this doesn't need to be perfect. Um, well, the main thing is that if there's a big slope, then you're going to have to put a lot of resin in, and the resin tank will, re will drop to below printable levels um, way sooner, uh, because the resin will kind of collect on one side, and the other side might end up dry, high and dry. So we want this to be as level as we can so that we can we don't have to fill the vat up with tons and tons of resin to um to uh to print and so the bubble let's start with this one here this bubble is off towards the back and that means since the bubble rises i want to raise the front And so I'm using two hands here, which you can't see. You might see the bubble move slowly. I'm using two hands here to raise the two front legs. And the front is on this side. All right. And so I'm raising the front of the printer. And that is going to make the... bubble slowly move okay so that bubble is bubble's pretty centered. Now I need to, it looks like I'm going to need to raise this bubble here along this axis 
side to side, side to side tilt of the machine. Oval seems a little bit too far towards the left side of the machine. So I'm going to raise the right side of the machine to get that bubble. There's a bit of eyeballing involved. So that looks pretty centered. Uh, the front back needs a little bit more. Still, I want a little bit more to the front. All right. So it looks pretty decent. So let's finish plugging in the electronics. Let me give a quick recap of what we've got plugged in so far. So far, we only have the projector components plugged in here. And so what we've got is the gray cable. The gray cable is a serial cable. We're going to use this to allow the computer to turn on and off the projector. And then we've got the HDMI cable. This is going to the computer and let the computer use, treat the projector as a second monitor. And that's how we're going to send the images to print. Third thing we've got so far, also just simply connected to the projector, is the power cable for the projector. This should be self-explanatory. We have not, however, plugged anything into this board yet. And so we've got to get the board wired in. And we also have to deal with this with the uh, with the gray cable for projector control because there are almost no computers today that contain nine pin serial ports and that is what this blue guy here is this blue guy here has got the male end of the RS-232 connection here and a serial uh, USB on the other end. So we need to simply plug this in. And this is going to be held in by tension. It's going to be a little weird because there are male screws on both ends. There's no sockets. So these are not going to screw into each other. They're just going to held in by tension. And that's fine. I mean, this is only used to turn on and then turn off the projector. We're not sending any data down the signal. And then this end is USB. So the USB then will allow the computer to turn on and off the projector. We do have a few more things that we need to get the printer up and running. We need to provide power to the ramps board, right, to the control board here. And we need to plug in the USB end into the ramps board as well. So the USB is easy. I'm going to do that first. I'm going to thread in the device end of the USB cable. And I'm going to bring it in through this hole. And then there's this big slot here. And that is where the, where the USB cable is going to go in. The second is the power. Power is also a kind of a push fit connector, but it's a little bit different. We have the transformer here, and this is a regular, you know, AC adapter. And then we've got the green cable here. This green cable is going to come into this uh, power input over over here and it's going to go in a particular way so first I'm going to thread this through the hole I'm going to get this plug in just make, make sure to get this side right it's going to be lined up like this with the 
um, with the two screw terminals facing outwards. And we're going to use the two terminals that are towards the front of the printer. So you want to get the plug here flush with the side of the receptacle and then you'll push up. You might need a little bit of force in there. And when you're done, the plug and the receptacle will be flush on the front side. And that's how you know that you got it lined up correctly. This side is flush and then you just push in and we are ready, ready to go. So now what we're going to do is we'll plug, we've got two USBs coming out now. These two USBs are going to go into a computer. We've got HDMI. HDMI is going to go into a computer. And we've got two AC plugs. And those are going to go into uh, two AC power sources.